Welcome everyone to a new update. Today we'll be covering everything surrounding the upcoming merge for Ethereum, also known as ETH 2.0. Before we continue, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and like this YouTube update. As you can see, we are back with the YouTube videos. I've been ill in the past month, but slowly grinding back up and I'm not planning to go away. So you should be seeing me way more on this platform. If you like what we do, we also have a trade letter with the latest altcoin setups, market information and market analysis. You can try it for free for one week and the link can be found in the description beneath. Finally, FTX is our core sponsor on this YouTube channel and we are able to do a big giveaway. We're giving away three one-year memberships to our platform 8 Global, where I'm sharing my trading portfolio and way more. In order to do that, sign up through FTX through the links in the description beneath and you'll be able to win those prizes. But more importantly, today we are going to cover everything surrounding the upcoming ETH merge and the possible effects on the crypto markets. ETH is close to launching the merge on the mainnet and it's estimated to launch between the September 15th and 16th of this year, which is in less than a month from now. Next to that, the team has successfully launched the last testnet update on the 11th of August. So what we will be discussing today? First, we'll be giving you a slight introduction into Ether and then we're going to cover everything surrounding E2.0, as we call this the merge, after which we go in depth in the technology as to what the changes are for Ether, which we call the consensus mechanism and the swap from proof of work to proof of stake. We are also going to cover the scalability trilemma. And after that, we'll be discussing the beacon chain and several updates Ethereum will be going through, and then we'll dive into the effects of the merge on the supply, but also something we call sharding. Then finally, a topic about the investment opportunities around this event and how you should approach them. And finally, a conclusion. So let's start off with Ether. Ethereum is a decentralized global software platform powered by blockchain technology. It is the first decentralized smart contract platform and Ethereum is designed to be programmable, secure and decentralized. In order to do that, Ethereum needs to be able to handle a lot of transactions per second. However, it can't manage it now because of a lack of scalability. Furthermore, the usage of Ethereum has been increasing steadily for years. In the first glance, Ethereum did work smoothly, as not many developers have been using Ethereum in the first years, but interest accelerated rather quickly, and when interest increases, more problems arise to be fixed. We can definitely say that the entire scalability issue is one of the largest issues to be fixed within the entire crypto and blockchain ecosystem. As you can see in the chart behind me, the active address numbers of Ethereum have been increasingly rising upwards, through which a peak is seen in the previous bull cycle of 2017. There is a constant demand for Ethereum and the adoption is slowly accelerating, so what is actually needed for Ethereum to go towards the next level? Let's dive into Ethereum 2.0. What is Ethereum 2.0? Well, the Ethereum protocol was launched in 2015. However, the Ethereum community always expected that a few key upgrades will be necessary to unlock Ethereum's full potential. In the chart, you can see that the volatility of the transaction fees on Ethereum network have been going up and down massively. Fees are initially inclined to increase when the price of Ethereum increases. However, this results into a case where regular people like Hans and Anja can't properly use Ethereum anymore as it's too expensive. Ethical question. Should those people be able to use Ethereum or should it just be for developers? We've seen two peaks in the past five years in which we have had an acceleration in the transaction fees of Ethereum. The first one is the ICO bubble, which peaked during the previous bull cycle and which created a massive demand for ETH as all the ICOs were created on Ethereum and most of them were garbage. The second one is the increased demand for NFTs, which can be minted on the Ethereum network and accelerated the fees quite massively. We've already seen a small version of that in 2018 with the first NFTs and projects which came out, but the massive surge in the NFT space has caused another impulse to the transaction fees of Ethereum recently. The main reason behind the lack of scalability of Ethereum is the reason that Ethereum can only handle 12 to 15 transactions per second, which is not enough by a mile. High demand is driving up transaction fees, making Ethereum expensive for the average user. The disk space needed for to run on an Ethereum client is growing at a fast rate. And the underlying proof of work consensus algorithm that keeps Ethereum secure and decentralized has a significant environmental impact due to the large energy consumption. 
To gain a better understanding of blockchains in general, we should be able to discuss what the proof of stake and proof of work consensus mechanisms are. When it comes to blockchains like Ethereum, which are essentially distributed databases, the network must agree on the network's current state. This agreement between independent parties is achieved using consensus mechanisms. Consensus mechanisms allow distributed systems, which are essentially networks of computers, to work together and stay secure. There are two types of these consensus mechanisms, which are proof of work and proof of stake. Ethereum currently uses a proof-of-work consensus protocol, just like Bitcoin. Proof-of-work is done by miners who compete to create new blocks full of processed transactions. The winner shares the block with the rest of the network and earns some freshly minted ETH. The race is won by the computer, which is able to solve a math puzzle the fastest, which is what we call the proof-of-work. Ethereum plans to go towards proof of stake instead of proof of work and proof of stake is facilitated by validators who have a certain amount of staked ETH to participate in the system. A validator is chosen at random to create new blocks, broadcast them to the network and earn rewards. Instead of needing to do intense computational work, you need to have staked your ether in the network. If you verify the wrong transactions as a validator, your staked ether gets slashed causing you to lose a portion of the staked ETH. This is the first step of the transformation process for Ether, but there's more and now we'll be diving into a more in-depth approach to the technology, which is the blockchain and scalability trilemma. In the context of decentralization, security and scalability, the blockchain trilemma reverts to the generally held notion that decentralized networks can only deliver two of the three benefits at any given moment. Potential solutions to the trilemma have been under development for a long time, but there's no real solution yet. Malicious actors should be unable to take control of blockchain networks if strong defenses protect them. This part contains the security part of the trilemma. Increasing the number of transactions or users on a blockchain should not result in higher cost or longer transaction times. This is the scalability part of the trilemma. As opposed to a single owner, blockchain networks network control with all members. This is the decentralization part of the trilemma. Transactions take a long time and you, you need to pay a lot for every basic function in Ethereum. Scalability is a serious problem and the E2.0 vision is to fix this trilemma. How does Ethereum intend to address the trilemma and which decisions are made from that point? Should everyday users be able to use Ethereum or is it a layer for developers and app builders? To understand that, we need to start with the first update of ETH 2.0, which is called the Beacon Chain. The ETH 2.0 update consists of three upgrades. The first one is the creation of the Beacon Chain, which brought the staking future to, feature to Ethereum and worked as a groundwork for its future upgrades. The second upgrade is the Merge, which combines the Beacon Chain with the Ethereum Proof of Work mainnet. And the last one is the sharding upgrade, which will improve Ethereum's capacity to store data. The Beacon Chain shipped on December 1st of 2020. The Beacon Chain is a ledger of accounts that conducts and coordinates the network of stakers. The Beacon Chain is a foundational component for moving from proof of work to proof of stake structure. The Beacon Chain itself enables proof of stake for Ethereum. The transition to proof of stake will make Ethereum significantly more secure and decentralized by comparison. The more people that participate in the network, the more decentralized and the resistant to attacks it becomes. While the Beacon Chain is already live, it exists as a separate chain from mainnet since its genesis. The plan is to swap out the current proof of work algorithm on the execution layer and replace it with the proof of stake consensus protocol that the beacon chain provides. This process is known as the merge, as it will merge the new consensus layer with the existing execution layer and put an end to proof of work mining for Ethereum. This will also mean that people won't be able to mine Ethereum anymore and will have to stake Ethereum to get rewards for their work. In the chart, you will be able to see that the number of staked Ether has been increasing fast in the past period. As a result of the merge, all transactions will be validated by proof-of-stake validators who will also propose blocks. This transition to proof-of-stake will bring some changes to the way the blockchain issues ETH. This is essentially what the merge entails. Now that we got that out of the way, it's good to start discussing what impact the merge will have on the supply of ETH as this is the most important part on a fundamental level. 
The merge will change how ETH is issued. ETH is currently issued from two sources, the mainnet and the beacon chain. Following the merge, zero tokens will be issued from the execution layer. Let's dive into some numbers of the inflation of Ethereum and the impact of it. But first we're going to discuss the current situation. Right now we see approximately 4.9 ETH being issued in a year as a proof of work reward. This is an inflation of 4.1% per year. Additionally, 13 million ETH is being staked in the beacon chain and it gives an inflation of 0.5% per year. As a total, per year, the annual issuance rate is 4.6% of which 90% goes to the miners and 10% being issued to the stakers. Now, after the merge, proof of work will no longer be valid under the rules of consensus, so the issuance for proof of work will be zero. At the end, the net reduction in ETH issuance will be 90%. This is a massive change in the supply of ETH. Apart from its issuance, there will also be changes to how ETH is burned. Burning ETH is the opposite force to ETH issuance. Transactions on Ethereum require a minimum fee, known as a base fee, which fluctuates continuously based on the network activity. As a result of the transaction process, this fee is burned and is no longer in circulation. That sets the stage for Ethereum to become deflationary, meaning there will be more ETH that is burned than there is ETH that is being issued, assuming that the usage of the network stays the same or increases. The ETH merge will decrease the amount of ETH issued by a lot. It will not be a fixed amount of issuance anymore, but it will be much lower than it used to be. Now that we have got the ETH reduction in issuance wrapped up, it's time for the final part of the puzzle, which is sharding. Sharding will be coming after the merge, not with the merge. Sharding is a multi-phase upgrade to improve Ethereum scalability and capacity, which are the two biggest bottlenecks for the network. Sharding reduces the need for validators to store all of the data themselves, allowing them to rely on data techniques instead. The idea of sharding is to break up the main blockchain into separate segments, so nodes only need to verify a subset of transactions. With nodes validating transactions in parallel, network throughput can increase and dApps can scale to meet the needs of a growing number of users. As a result, more people should be able to participate or run clients in a sharded Ethereum network. Because the attack service area is smaller when a network is more decentralized, this will increase security. The graph shows the data growth on the beacon chain. Sharding, as we discussed, will be planned to manage the data efficiently as a next chapter. Sharding is the last update of E2.0. If it is successfully implemented, ETH will execute 100,000 transactions per second in optimal conditions. That situation will lower transactions fees while leveraging the security of Ethereum. Sharding update is planned for 2023, depending on how quickly work progresses after the merge. Now let's discuss investing into Ethereum. The ultimate goal is to make optimal investment and trading decisions. If you have watched all the information on the upgrade of Ethereum, what will be your ideal conclusion for an investment in Ethereum? That's the question you should be asking. Well, technically, the markets have been going down by more than 80% for Ethereum, as you can see in the chart. Usually, if such a big fundamental upgrade is happening and the markets are down such a significant value, it would be wise to start looking for an investment opportunity rather than looking away or selling their crypto. Of course, the markets have been seeing strength recently as Ethereum has been gaining momentum. It's up more than 100% from the bottom and it has been dragging the entire markets upwards as the hype starts to grow towards the merge. What does that tell you about an investment into Ethereum? It is likely that we will be seeing a case of a buy the rumor or sell the news. Going towards the actual event, we are seeing momentum upwards as more people are hyped about the event and buying Ethereum. After the event, the hype slowly fades away and a typical correction should be happening. However, long-term investment, what is a more likely occurrence? Well, if the merge is going to be happening in a proper way, you will be sure that Ethereum is going to have a lot of adoption and growth on the platform itself, which means that the value of the underlying coin is going to increase a lot. Next to that, the inflation will be reduced and burns will be increased, which is going to push the price up even more. A scenario where Ethereum is going to carry the markets rather than Bitcoin is a likely case. This means that if you have an perspective of thinking that the merge is going to be a success, you're looking at a potential ROI of 1000% from here, while drawdown of 50% is on the other side of the bed. I would know what I'd be doing. 
Finally, if you're looking to invest in a basket, I don't believe that all the layer ones are going to be dropping quite fast, but they lose momentum. Something that you should be looking at are layer twos, which will be having a function within the ETH ecosystem. In summary, E2.0 is a long-awaited update from the cryptocurrency community. The team is trying to fix one of the biggest problems of the blockchain structure, which is the scalability tree lemma. E2.0 is expected to go live on the 15th of September. If the merge is executed successfully, the ETH emission will be reduced significantly and ETH will be 100% proof of stake. This also means that more ETH will be staked by validators further reducing the circulating supply. In the long run, we, are, we will be waiting for the sharding upgrade to consider E2.0 a completed upgrade expected to go live in 2023. E2.0 is a long-term but very influential update for the markets. We should follow merge news closely and create strategies for altcoin on behalf of ETH because it's mostly affecting the altcoin markets as well. It is also significant for Ethereum, especially as we approach the merge date. The merge is very bullish for Ethereum, but the rest of the market could drag its price down. We should not forget that the global market sentiment is also a key factor for the crypto market. Thank you very much for watching this YouTube update on Ethereum. If you like the content, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe down as well. Also, if you'd like to get altcoin setups and more, make sure to check out our one week free newsletter in the description beneath. Remember, stay calm and patient and I'll see you again tomorrow.